can I help you? Hey, I was wondering if I could speak to someone about uh, flight lessons. Of course, let me get them on the phone. Hi, I have a customer up here wanting to learn how to fly. All right, sounds good. He's on his way up. Awesome. Hey, how's it going? Hi, I'm Chad. I'm Bailey. Nice to meet you. I'm nice one of the flight instructors here. So you're interested in learning how to fly? Yes, love to. All right, well, students, everybody, let's go ahead and head on back and we'll talk about it and see what it takes. Awesome. All right, let's head this way. <clears throat> okay, so <clears throat> coming back here, some of the things you want to learn how to fly. Mm -hmm. And so students, some of the things we're going to go over today is what it takes to start your flight training. So Bailey, you want to come in and start your flying. So first off, how old are you? Uh, as of right now, I'm 19. Okay, so you meet the age requirements. You can't uh, solo before the age of 16, and you have to be 17 before you can take your check ride to become a pilot. The other thing is I have to verify that you're a United States citizen. Mm -hmm. So we could do that with a few documents, but I'll just have you bring them in later. The other thing, one of the other things you need to do is you need to be uh, medically fit. So okay. I'll send you to a doctor and you can go get basically a physical that okay. you're in good shape. Okay. Um, any other questions that you had for me? Um, so when we do this flight school, uh, whose airplane are we really using? Well, you obviously don't have an airplane, yeah. but Mizzou, we do have airplanes for you to use. So you'll be using our airplanes. They're Piper airplanes. We'll go and we'll fly those and you'll use those for your check. Rides. Okay, is it kind of like renting a car in a way then? It's similar. It's real close to it. You'll use it, we'll usually about two hours at a time go out and that's would be the length of your lesson and then okay. we'll come back in. Um, as far as time as it takes to get uh, your pilot's license, you're looking somewhere around 40 hours as the minimum, but the average person goes much longer, so don't be okay. worried about that. We'll come in here, we'll do that. At the end, after you've flown with me, and I think you're ready and everything's safe, mm -hmm. you will have a written test to go okay. take and make sure you know the rules and how to fly the airplane, and then you'll go to our examiner and have a flight test and an oral test. Okay, is the oral test just like um, him asking me questions back and forth, kind of? It's, it's a lot about that. He'll ask you about weather and the airplane and all the different airspaces that you have to fly in. Okay, gotcha. Um, then, after that, you go and pass that test, you are a private pilot. Awesome, awesome. Uh, can we go out and see an airplane? Yeah, let's go jump in one right now. Awesome. So, Okay, this is our airplane that we just bought. We're going to make sure that it's... Uh, safe and ready for flight on our first time. This is Bailey. He's going to come through here and we're going to walk through and show you all the different parts of the airplane, what they do, and make sure that they are safe and there's nothing damaged with it. So first off, we start on the inside. So we'll show Bailey how to go ahead and climb up in. You have a handhold right here and you'll put your foot right on top of that and climb right up in. Okay, go ahead and open the door by twisting that. And then there's another one down there. Pull it straight out up and open. And he's going to go ahead and climb on in over to the left seat. And I'm going to climb into the right, right behind him. Okay. Okay, just like everything else on an airplane, everything you're going to follow is on a checklist. Okay. So students, let's talk about some of the instruments that we have in the airplane that help us to both fly it and navigate it and get from one place to another. So we're just going to stop in the top, start in the top left over here. And this one is an airspeed indicator. It tells you how fast you are flying and moving through the air. And you can see we're going to be somewhere usually shooting around about 100 knots through the air. The next one over here, this is called an attitude indicator. What it does is it tells us how the airplane is positioned. Either it's with the nose pointing up or the nose pointing down or a turn left or right. This one over here, this is an altimeter. What it does is it tells us how high we are flying. And what you can do is you would set it for the correct pressure during that day so that it's always accurate. If we come back over here to the bottom left with the little airplane, that's called a turn coordinator. So that helps us in a turn to maintain a standard turn as far as not turn too steep or too fast. The one in the bottom middle, 
That's called a heading indicator, and it's just like a compass. It tells us what direction we're pointed and you know which way we want to fly. We would use that in conjunction with our actual magnetic compass. The next one over here is called a vertical speed indicator, and it tells you how fast you're going up or going down. Uh, you'll use that a lot when you're flying in the clouds. These two here are actually the same instrument, and they're used for navigating. We could tune those into stations, and it would tell us whether we're going to it or whether we're going away from it. Like your car, we also have radios in an airplane, but our radios aren't really used for listening to music. We have a COM1 and a COM2 and then a NAV1. So what this is, is we can use this radio to talk to tower or to center or anybody else. And we could use this radio over here to get current weather at the airport, wherever we're going, and we could see what the winds are doing and where the clouds are. This radio, we would tune it to a certain station, and then we would be able to use this in conjunction with that to go to or from. And a lot of your cars probably have a GPS. We have a GPS in our airplane too. We could use that to navigate, and it tells us which direction we need to go, how far we need to go, and how fast we are currently going, which would also tell us how long it's going to take us to get there. So that's a lot of the instruments that we have in our airplane, uh, a little bit more than your standard car. Now we're gonna learn about the outside of the airplane, which we're gonna start on the right wing with Bailey. So the first thing we look at on our checklist is gonna be the flap. That's this piece right here that's down. We use them for takeoffs and landings, and we, what we wanna make sure is there's no damage, no ice or snow or frost and that everything moves that should move. So Bailey, I'm gonna have you go ahead and push down on it. It should go down and come back up. Now there's four different hinges. Go ahead and check that hinge. There should be a, a nut and a bolt and a pin. And then look underneath, there's three more underneath the wing. Okay. On down. And then we should see a nut and a bolt on each of those. Yep, they all look good. That's a good, nice, clean aileron. Now the, or flap. The next one we're gonna learn about is the aileron. And one of the funny things is a lot of the parts of an airplane the terms are come from the French language, so you're going to hear several French words today. So this is our aileron. We're checking the same thing. Nice and clean, free of ice and frost and snow and no damage. So what I'll have you do, Bailey, is go ahead and push it down, and it should move back up as well. Now, what we checked on the inside of the airplane, the yoke, mm -hmm. is what manipulates this. So as it goes down, you'll see that they turn to the left, and then they turn back up to the right. So I'll have you go ahead, there's three hinges along the top, go ahead and check those. You should see a pin on either side. They all look good. Okay, then come back over here, raise it up. Underneath you're going to see an actuator and should be a nut and a bolt underneath. Gotcha. Looks good. Alrighty. That's a good aileron. It's secure and no damage. Let's go around to the wingtip. Okay, Bailey, and the next thing we're going to be checking is going to be the wing tip. So, on your checklist, when we're looking at the wing tip, we're looking for all the screws along the top. We want to make sure they're secure in, and then there's the same amount of screws on the bottom. And then okay. we should see all of them there. Again, this is not metal. This is fiberglass, so no cracks, there's nothing broken, and there's no damage. No ice, snow, or frost. So, the way that we're checking the wing is we have to check the upper surface and the leading edge. We want to make sure it's free of ice, snow, frost, and any kind of damage. So the way we check that is our hand is going to check the leading edge, and we're going to use our eyes to scan the top all the way down. And so I'll go ahead and let you check the rest of the wing all the way down in the top surface. Looks good. All right, very good. Now, on our checklist, the next thing that we're going to be looking for is going to be what? The underwing fuel vent. Okay, so. In an airplane, one of the interesting things is where we actually keep the fuel is located in the fuel tanks inside the wings. So we also have to be able to drain it out. So actually underneath the wing over here, you will see a tube. Okay. Make sure it's not bent. It's free and open and clean. And the next thing on there was what? We have our landing gear. All right. So how many wheels do we have on this airplane? Looks like we have uh, three on this airplane. All right. Now, interesting thing is on this airplane, the third wheel is on the nose, so it's called a tricycle gear. Much like 
some of the bikes that you see kids riding around. On other airplanes, you'll see the third wheel back on the tail, and it's called a tailwheel airplane, and it has a lot of different applications as far as flying in and out of grass strips. No, on this one, one of the things that we want to check for the landing gear is the tire. It's got good inflation. The tread is good on it. Also, you can see what's called the strut. It's kind of like the shock absorber on a car. You want at least four inches showing. And it looks like about we have four inches showing. Good. Then the last thing we're looking for is the brake line and the brakes. We want to make sure when we get back down on the ground, when we hit the brakes, that the airplane will actually come to a stop. And uh, looks like we have no leaks. Okay, very good. Next thing we wanted to look at on our checklist is uh, the fuel sump. The fuel sump. Since we do store the fuel in the wings, one of the things we have to do before we go flying an airplane, unlike a car, is we have to make sure the fuel is clean, we have the right kind of fuel, and there's no water in it. So go ahead and get a good sump. It's right underneath there, and just push that straight up. Okay, very good. Now, what you'll see is that fuel should be a blue color and there's no water or debris or anything in it. And then one of the other things you gotta do as you're gonna do it is, it smells like gas. So go ahead and take a smell. Mm -hmm. It does smell like gas. Alrighty, and I'll just go ahead and hold on to it. So okay. All right, now, what are we looking at next on our checklist? Uh, it looks like we have the air vent. Air vent, so inside your car, you can just roll the windshield down or turn on the air conditioner. In an airplane, we don't have that option, so the way we get fresh air into the airplane is through that, it scoops up air and it brings it into the cabin so you always have circulating air. We want to make sure it's clean and free of any kind of damage. Looks like it is. All righty, very good. Now, the next thing on our checklist, if you look at it. Looks uh, our windshield. Windshield. So one thing that's very important when you're flying an airplane is you have a clean windshield, free of damage, and that is securely fastened because you want to be able to see other airplanes when you're mm -hmm. out flying around. So it looks clean. It's secure, there's no cracks in it, and you can yeah. see through it very easily. Mm -hmm. All right, what is next? Next, we're gonna have our oil. Okay, now, unlike your car, you probably don't check your oil on your car every time you go out driving, but in an airplane, it's crucial that you do. So what we're gonna do is look up in here, and this is the actually the engine of the airplane. Okay. So we have a certain amount of oil that we have to keep in it engine. Now, the engine, mm -hmm. that's what turns the propeller and actually pulls us through the air. Okay. One of the difference between an airplane engine and your car engine is your car engine uses water or liquid to keep it cool, whereas this one doesn't have any of that because water's heavy. Mm -hmm. So this actually uses air over the engine to help okay. cool everything down. So one of the things we want to check is go ahead and look in here and make sure there's nothing in there that's going to block that flow of air. Uh, it looks like it's all open. Okay, now the other thing that we check on an airplane is the oil in the engine. So go ahead and we're gonna take this off and okay. check the level in that oil. We should have no less than six, but no more than eight quarts. Let's see here. It twists around. Looks like we have no less than six. Very good. And you can see it's good clean oil, so mm -hmm. it's gonna be nice. Then after that, it's just kind of a general inspection in here into the engine engine compartment. Make sure there's no large puddles of oil. Okay. No wires or frayed or breaking or anything dangling. And you're just taking a good assessment. You don't see any leaks or nothing looks out of the ordinary. Yeah, looks all good. Okay, when we're done with that, let's go ahead and button it up. Because the next thing we want to make sure is our cowling is nice and secure. So, push that straight in, down, start from vertical and turn to the right. Nice and secure. Yep. All right, what's next on our checklist? Next we have our cowling. All right. Okay, Bailey, now that we're around here to the nose, the first thing we want to check is going to be the spinner. Okay. Now, that's this pointed piece on the front. What it actually helps do is it shoves air into the engine to help cool, like we talked about. Okay. So one of the things you want to check is make sure there's no damage, there's free of any kind of dents or anything like that, and then all the screws are all in, all the way around it, on the top and the bottom. And you're gonna use your hand to get all the way around. Gotcha. So that looks good. What next are we looking at? Uh, we're looking at the props, well, engine compartment. Engine compartment. So we wanna make sure that that air can go in and cool these engines. So these two big openings here on the front, that's where the air comes in. So we're gonna look in there, make sure there's no bird's nest, there's no blockings. People will put, if they're gonna leave their airplane outside, big foam pads in here to keep birds and stuff from out of that. So if they're gonna be storing their airplane, that's one of the things they have to remove before starting the engine. 
Okay. All right. Now there's nothing in there. What's next? Uh, we have the alternator belt. Alternator belt. So we produce energy for running the radios, turning on lights and everything like that with an alternator. What you want to do is you're going to have to reach back here and feel for a belt. You want to make sure it's nice and tight. So go ahead and reach in okay. there and feel it for me. Yep. I feel it. Feels tight, so it will work. What's the next thing on our checklist? Next we have the propeller. All right, so this is the propeller. This is what actually pulls us through the air. The engine turns this very fast. So the way you check it is you're going to run your hand all the way down the leading edge and all the way up the trailing edge. So it has the leading edge like the wing? Yes, just like okay. the wing because it is another airfoil. If you could get down and look at it, it would be shaped just like the wing. Awesome. So you're also looking, there's no bends, there's no cracks, there's no nicks and it's going to work the way that it should. Okay. All right. Same thing on this side. I'm going to run my hand all the way up it, all the way down it. This one feels just as smooth as well. Gotcha. Well, all right. What's next? Uh, we got the nose wheel. Nose wheel. We're looking at this third one over here on the front. We're coming down. Same thing as on the, the other mains. We're looking for about four inches on the strut there. Okay. Looks no like oil, no leaking, everything's secure. And then good tire, inflation, and tread. Looks good. We don't have any brakes on this one because we only use the mains. But this is the, the tire that we actually use to steer the airplane with. And the funny thing to find out is you actually steer the airplane on the ground with your feet. So when we're in there and we're pushing on the rudder pedals, we are turning this wheel. Oh. Okay, Bailey. Now we're back here. We checked everything on the horizontal stabilizer. What we're going to look at here is the vertical, also okay. known as the rudder. Okay. So, one of the things that's kind of interesting to know about an airplane is a lot of the stuff that is taken off of an airplane also comes from nautical terms, from seas and people using boats. So a ship had a rudder. It sat underneath the ship, so okay. airplane has a rudder. It's just vertical. It sticks up into the air and it helps keep the airplane pointed in the right direction. Okay. Gotcha. Some of the things that we're going to check on it is the same things we would check on any of the other airfoils. We're going to come through here and we're going to look and make sure it's clean. No it damage or ice or frost or snow on it. Okay. And a couple of the other things that are in addition to the rudder is we do have a couple of antennas back here. Gotcha. We have these on the tail, and we have two lights that we need to check that make sure they come on so people can see us. So if we go ahead and get the lights turned on, you can see we have a flashing beacon on the top, and we have a solid white on the rear.